Hmm. Not wiggly. Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric C here. Hope you guys are doing good. I'm doing just great. Yeah. Got the screws. They came in the other day, opened up the box, put them in. They are tight. They're not wiggly. And I don't mean tight like they're re-threading themselves. I mean tight to where they're not going to pull out. There are, there's no problems, no issues with them. And it's, you know, it's like they're made for it. Well, technically they are made for it. So this is like Christmas in July now. Why? Because i got some parts here. And I think the parts are for this thing. I'm, at least I'm pretty sure of it. So how do they tape this box up? Let's see here. This side's not taped up. So I will open up this side first if it'll let me. These pyramid boxes. I kind of hate them. Come on, you. Alright, first off, here is the neck that I told you guys I ordered. And right off the bat, the frets have very minor wear. You can see where the strings were laying across, but they don't feel divoted like they're down. There's a truss rod adjustment. Here's the repaired crack. Didn't do too bad of a job, but I wonder if I knock it if it comes loose. And no, it's pretty good. So all this is going to get refinished. All this is going to get refinished. Nice little. This matches perfectly. Let's see how well it fits. Oh, it fits like a charm. Yeah, she's going to look like a Kramer again. Now, I highly doubt these screw holes will match here, but it's a good possibility they may. All right, so i got more parts coming out over here. There's a spring. Let's see, I think that's it. All right, here are all the spring, the claw, another screw for the claw. The back plate for the neck, which just says Kramer on it. There is no serial number or anything else. And then here is the Floyd, which this is a strings go through here. There is no blocks over here. It looks like it's in decent shape. The blades do have a little bit of a divot on them, but I can fix that. That is not a big deal. And where is it hitting it? It kind of fits just back here it's just a little bit a little bit off so let's see here otherwise it does fit yeah I'm gonna have to Possibly just trim out back here just a little bit. It's a good possibility too that you know these screws may be too the uh, they may be a little bit too wide. But I do have to work on these screws a little bit, even though they are in good shape. I can't thread them by hand. They they won't go out. I do have to work on a little bit of the, I don't know if you can see that now, a little bit on the inside of there. There is a little bit of a ring. 
not much of one but there is a little bit of a ring and uh, what I need to do is to file that so it's got a nice V inside there to where the blades will touch down on that really good so how well is this back plate gonna fit Did I order the right one? Oh, I ordered the right one. Oh man no well, it's a little bit small not a big deal not a big deal I can actually get these were cheap though back plate was cheap I can get new back plate that is not a big deal I have to just figure out which one is the right one for this thing I don't have to get a new another Floyd for this this one will work just fine this is a Floyd Rose 2 so it's supposed to be an actual Floyd Rose and like I said I wanted the string through not the double locking and then as for nut so I have a bunch of these nuts but I have to check to see if I have a nut that is got the under mount instead of the top mount and tuner is not a big deal but first I need to work on this thing so let's see how straight this is right now. Oh, it's pretty much straight. Do I have a wrench for that? I do have a wrench for this. So if I give this some, if I tighten this thing up. Oh yeah, trust rod works. Got a little bit of a forward bow in it. And if I go ahead and loosen this up completely, no, she looks like she's still pretty straight if I loosen it up completely. So I'll even use the strings to put a forward bow in it. But it is straight. I can't wait to start working on it. I ordered a candy apple red touch up kit for this. I got a couple of spots, one here. This one here, I probably, when I go ahead and cut this, I got a template that I could put over this for Floyd Roses to see if um, uh, this will be close to the Floyd Rose that the template that I have without having the angle on each side. Now this does not have the angle on each side but it does have the blades. Now these blades aren't the removable kind are they? I can't tell. Sometimes there would be a something on there for removal. Now this is the, the screw-in trim. Yeah it's a screw-in. I gotta tighten this nut. This nut's loose. All right, so we're getting there. We are getting there. And is this claw gonna be too small or too big or the holes gonna line up for the claw? These holes line up for the claw. It looks like it'll fit in just fine. You know, I could have ordered maybe, these guys are just the diameter of them, that's what I meant to say, is just probably a little bit too big for that, uh, and that's why it's sitting back a little bit. But again, I'm not worried about it, plus I have to sharpen these blades a little bit, because there is a little bit of a divot in the blade, I don't know if you can see that or not, and when I sharpen those blades, that will kind of get rid of uh, some of the meat, and it might move up the hair that I need it to move up, to be able to sit in here. Now I do have the foam that I'm going to put inside of here. Very, very thin foam pads um, with adhesive on the back of it. I ordered a bunch of that shit a long time ago. The only thing that I have to do is I have to get a different Kramer back plate. And I'm not throwing this one away or uh, getting rid of it or sending it back because this is a good plate. I could probably use it on a different guitar. Not a big deal that it says Kramer on there. But for this one here, it's not the right size. It's just a little bit. Screws go onto the edge of it, and I'm not happy with that. It has to be a little bit wider. So I have to figure out my measurements again on how uh, how it's going to work as far as getting another plate goes. If I can, I may not be able to. Now, as far as that mark that was here, that is just a scratch. It's not cracked all the way through or nothing. So yeah. 
It's not a bad neck. It's actually pretty nice. Looks like it's uh, probably a four piece. Well, one, two, three. And yeah, looks like it's just a three piece neck. Not bad, not bad at all. Now, let's see something here. If I go ahead and put a couple of screws in here, which these are probably going to be a lot bigger than the hole is. Oh, yeah, they are a lot bigger than the hole is. So, what I want to do is I'm going to put this here in place and do the old trick of. Oh, yeah, they fall right into place. Oh, yeah. They fell right into place. So that's good. I don't have to re-drill anything for neck. And there's no overhang over here, nothing. It fits in really nice like if it was meant for it. It probably was meant for it. I hate when they do this. There's a burr on each hole, around the hole. There's a burr from drilling. I hate that. Also, what I hate too is when the holes for the neck, you know, these may not be the right neck screws for this. These might be a little bit on the wide side, but I hate when you can't slide them in the hole. I actually, how I like it is to have the holes that are in the body for the neck, neck plate, whatever, um, to be just a touch bigger not much, just a touch bigger than the diameter of the screw. And the reason for that is, is when you put the neck together with the body, uh, because it doesn't have to thread into the body, you pull that neck a lot closer and tighter to the body itself. Well, having that, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, uh, uh, resistance or, or having to thread through the body at the same time, thread through. Because when you do, when you put a neck on the guitar, you got to hold that neck in place real tight together and then start threading your screws and hope that the body and the neck don't separate as you're threading them so that's my story I'm sticking to it I could get a hold of my buddy get the new Kramer uh, decal for this I already have a truss rod cover that is coming for this as well and I think I already have the string retainer that goes across over here to hold the strings down now. And for some reason, this looks like there's glue. No, it's some type of sticky tape or something that they put in here. No, it's glue. Why would you glue a locking nut? Hmm. The frets don't feel pretty bad on here at all. They actually feel pretty good all the way down they feel nice well there's one right here right here it's a little sharp but if i need to refret it i have the fret material to do so so i'm not worried about that somebody played this guitar boy you can really see all the, where the finger marks were somebody used to do some uh shredding with this thing looks like oh that's fine that is fine. Anything to get this son of a bitch back together, ready to go. And if you already guessed, once it's together, it'll be up on eBay. So that's it for Christmas in July for now. I do have to wait for the truss rod cover to come in. Everything else I can deal with, exception of the back plate. So I'm going to have to do some measuring on the back plate. Again, where the screws are. And I bet you this came with one of those back plates that was, uh, uh, said Kramer on there, had the serial number, everything was raised up on it. I bet you that's what this thing came with. So we will go ahead and, see these things, they're not tight at all. I could turn them with a screwdriver, but I can't turn them by hand. I can't unscrew them by hand at all. Uh, they threaded in really nice, and what's nice about it too is there's no play in them at all. I was worried that those were going to be stripped out. I was worried that the wood would be uh, disintegrating or something inside all these holes for the threads because there's no sleeves inside this. This is threading through wood, and I kind of thought I was going to have to take some 
uh, wax and put it around the threads of the screw and put some CA glue around the screw itself and then thread it in and what that would do or using some wood glue what that would do it, it would uh, not reform the threads but make the threads harder to where now um, the screw won't be wiggly anymore it'll be tight up against the uh, the wood threads and the screw threads will be butted up against each other with the wax on the screw I'll be able to turn with a screwdriver and back out the screw leaving the new threads that the screw made into wood with the glue and uh, that will work out just fine but I don't have to so I do have a little bit divot right here there's a little chip right here um, anything else that I see on here looks like it will sand out there's a little bit of a dimple here and a little bit of a divot here which that I'm not worried about I'm worried about finish problems so pretty much everything is good as far as the body goes I want to touch up this I want to touch up that spot there and do a nice polishing I went to every auto parts store that I could find to find uh, candy apple red touch-up paint all right and either they changed the names of these colors or nobody stocks the candy apple red anymore and uh, that's what I found out is no candy apple red so I had to order it online it cost a little bit more for a paint kit touch-up kit online than it would at the auto parts store um now what i'm getting is lacquer so hopefully that if this is lacquer i will find out really fast or if this is not lacquer i'll find out really fast of putting lacquer on top of this because if you could put lacquer on top of lacquer but you could can't put lacquer on top of anything but you can put anything on top of lacquer so if you get that idea, um, lacquer is going to act like a, like a, it's a paint reducer actually. And what's going to happen is it's going to end up melting whatever it is I apply it to and it's going to act like a paint remover. So I don't want that. So I got to do a test spot someplace in one of these cavities to see what it's going to do. And if it does nothing and works out, I could fill that divot with the paint and uh, just polish it out and it should be gone shouldn't be able to see it and the rest of this you know the minor scratches and stuff that are in this this is not in bad shape i got lucky when i got this body because i found another one of these online sold by the same uh seller and it's pretty much beat up so i grabbed this one just in time there's no cracking or anything going on in the neck pockets on both sides uh whoever owned this guitar did a nice job in taking care of it but i'm kind of wondering though because this place here and you if you look at the last video that i did on uh researching the parts for this the last seller he breaks down a lot of guitars and sells a lot of parts he doesn't list the parts as being for what he broke down just as it's for this type of guitar or this this type of guitar um the bad thing about that though is like I could have the neck that came with this guitar or do I have the neck that came with this guitar when it was first built I don't know the holes line up pretty nice there's no issues with that but uh, and this is the neck that goes with this I did all kinds of research and found out that yep that is the one that goes with this body and it fits the pocket perfectly so I don't have to worry about doing anything as far as shimming moving from one side to the other side and finding out the happy media in the middle uh, to keep the the neck centered with the body yeah I don't have to worry about any of that all right guys that's my story I'm sticking to it you guys take it easy have a great 4th of July holiday be safe not sorry and uh, you know do what you guys do best take it easy